All right, joining me via Zoom, uh, as mentioned, NBA draft is on Wednesday. A guy that I think potentially may be a first rounder, but but I'm going to get to the, I'm going to introduce you in a second, Jalen Harris. But I want to set the scene here. Fall 2018, University of Nevada. I go up to watch a practice. Cody Martin, Caleb Martin, your your brothers, the guys that you got to know really well. Jordan Caroline, mm -hmm. top five team in the country. I see this cat yeah. over in the corner uh, uh, <laughs> jumping off one leg, 40-inch vert, uh, uh, fadeaway three swish. And I was like, who is that guy? And they were like, that's our next guy, Jalen Harris, uh, balled out for the Wolfpack mm -hmm. last year, first team all Mountain West. Long introduction, but how you doing, man? Doing good, man. I'm happy to be here. I'm glad to be on the show. First of all, uh, can you imagine, I mean, it, it's been a surreal journey for you, but, you know, quietly, you know, you, you did your time at Nevada. Uh, you're sitting there on the sideline watching this preseason top five team, but I'm telling you, man, I was in practice for a day or two, and I was just like, I don't know who that dude in the corner is, but that kid's something special. I mean, is it surreal to kind of kind of think back to this whole journey and process for you? Uh, definitely. You know, the whole process from, you know, even from just the beginning, not even at Nevada, but even before that, all of it, man, it's just been, you know, a blessing first and foremost, but it's been crazy, like you said. <laughs> so I want to, you know, it's crazy. I want to go through your journey and everything, but I also want to kind of begin at the end here. Uh, as I mentioned, NBA draft is on Wednesday. Uh, and I've talked to a lot of guys throughout this process, you know, prior to you coming on, Obi Toppin, Emmanuel Quickly, SEC Player of the Year, uh, Mason Jones, et cetera. What is it like now to be at the end of this journey? Because I'm guessing when you declared, you know, first of all, your season ended, the world was normal at the Mountain West Conference Tournament, but your season ends, I'm sure you, you know, you had a tough decision in deciding to stay or go, but you decide yeah. to leave. Uh, and I, th I think you're probably guessing, uh, okay, three months from now, I'm going to start my pro career. How surreal <laughs> has his last right. seven months been? <laughs> Man, it's been crazy. Like you said, we uh, we ended our season regularly, uh, sadly. But, you know what I mean, we, we've been waiting for a while. I've been waiting for a long time. I've had a lot of time to, you know, figure out, you know, what I was doing with the process, finding people, you know, just, just building my resources up and just getting ready for it. And so uh, I've just been trying to stay ready, man, honestly. So you're based in Dallas, and, and you know, Dallas, uh, Texas in general has been, I, I think, a little bit looser than a lot of parts of the country. But take us through this process, because I think, you know, probably April, May, you're just trying to get work in, you know, whenever you can. Yeah. I remember talking to Mason Jones, and he was literally running around the block and doing push-ups in the driveway. Uh, so, mm -hmm. so what has this process been like? I mean, take us through the last couple months, what you've been able to do, what you've just recently been able to do, all that kind of stuff. Um, I, uh, the whole process, man, especially early on, it was tough because, you know, everything shut down. It's hard to get in the gym. It's hard to, you know, get they, they, out here. They were shutting down parks. So like they take the rims off the parks out of the LA fitnesses. Like you couldn't go anywhere. And so, uh, it was tough, man. But like you said, same stuff like, uh, Mason was doing, you know, just trying to find ways out here outside, just using the different things that we have, uh, you know, just at our resources, man. But I just been, uh, like I said, just getting it in. I've been traveling. I've been to uh, Las Vegas to work out. I've been to Phoenix working out, uh, New Orleans. So just however I can, man, just been trying to get ready for this. Fantastic. And, and I do want to get into your journey and your path, but for uh, somebody who – um, you know, their team drafts you on Wednesday night or they, they've heard a lot about you. Just just tell us, uh, we'll get to your path, but your game. You know, I mean, people I'm sure have seen YouTube videos, highlights, but I mentioned, you know, the athleticism, mm -hmm. the skill, the stuff that I saw in Reno uh, two falls ago. Uh, tell people a little bit about your game, who Jalen Harris, the basketball player is. Uh, Jalen Harris, the basketball player, he's really versatile, man. That's first and foremost. I'd say, uh, you know, he's somebody who can – create for himself, create for others. He can play with the ball, he can play without the ball. Um, like you said, an athlete, uh, I've got good size. I can guard multiple positions. Um, and I got a high IQ for the game. I am um, a very competitive player, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, I'm very unselfish and just trying to do what I can to win, man. That's most important. And so, like I said, if I got to, you know, do whatever I got to do, if I got to create, like I said, create for myself, create for others, and I can try to do a little bit of everything. So I was doing some research on you and, uh, you know, basketball, kind of a corny line for me, but basketball is literally in your blood. Uh, tell mm -hmm. us the story, your, your mom, an all-time great at SMU, 
Uh, and I believe she was literally carrying you. Uh, team yeah. was in the NCAA tournament. Is that like a, a folk legend that a lot of people have been asking you about? Yeah, it's a it's pretty pretty crazy uh, story there. Like you said, just you know to be able to play that way, but it just happened to work out. You know, for her, she got she ended up getting pregnant like during the season, and so um, you know by the time the end of the season was over, she wasn't too far uh, into the pregnancy, and so. I was born in August, and then, you know, she came back right after. She she didn't miss any games. She didn't miss any games wow. before or after. So, yeah, she's a warrior. She's That's definitely That's incredible. <laughs> yes, sir. And, and your dad was a little bit of a hooper at SMU too, right? Yes, sir. He played there as well. That's, in, that's where they met at. Fantastic. And so, uh, you know, I, I read you played some ba uh, ba uh, football growing up. Excuse me, you grew up in Dallas, as I just said. Was basketball mm -hmm. always your main focus? Did you come to the sport late? I mean, I mean, how, uh, tell us a little bit about your youth. Um, so growing up, uh, well, like you said, I was born with a basketball, so that was always, you know, something that uh, I had there, but my parents, they gave me the opportunity to, you know, kind of go out and figure out what I wanted to do. Uh, they would work with me with basketball stuff, clearly, but uh, they let me play baseball, play football, I did track, um, just different things, trying to figure out what I liked, and so um, I did that up until high school, and then when I got to high school, I kind of cut everything and just went straight basketball. Did you cut everything? I heard you got hit pretty hard on the football field, and you were like, that's enough for me. All right. No, no, no. <laughs> Is that no. I wouldn't true? say that. I wouldn't say that. I'd say more along the lines of, you know, other guys grew a lot faster than me. Okay. So, you know what I mean? Like, Respect, I, I was yeah. a little late to the game. That was all. <laughs> well, no, I, I get it, man. I get it. And you know what? You can still be mm -hmm. effective, at, you know, on the court, uh, smaller, quicker, all that stuff. But one thing that's oh, yeah. kind of interesting. Uh, yeah, and I was going to say one thing that's interesting I was reading, you know, during the college recruiting process that a lot of guys wanted you more off the ball. Is that fair? Like not in a kind of a true point guard, hybrid guard kind of role. Is that fair? Yeah, they, um, a lot of the, the bigger schools that recruited me, they, uh, they wanted me for my, my ability to score. You know, I, um, growing up, uh, before I got to high school, you really, I, you know, I played point guard. I was a smaller, uh, smaller guy. I, I was naturally unselfish, you know, it was a point in time where, you know, people kind of had to force me to shoot the ball. And so, you know, it was my natural position growing up. And so that's kind of where um, I felt most comfortable playing that. And so by the time I got to high school, I was the biggest guy on the team at that mm -hmm. point. So I was playing, you know, I'm tipping and then going to get the ball sometimes, and, you know what I mean? So I'm just, just trying to get it done in high school. But um, like I said, the bigger schools, they kind of recruited me for that, for, you know, what they saw me do there. But um that's kind of what I found attractive about Louisiana Tech was that, you know, that they uh, they recruited me to kind of be there and play that that point guard creator style uh, position. Fantastic. So you mentioned Louisiana Tech. You go there for a year and a half, and then you end up uh, in Reno at the University of Nevada. Uh, first of all, you know, not to speak ill will of Louisiana Tech, but just curious as to to why you decided to, to leave town. And then what was it that was appealing about Nevada? I can probably take a guess, but I'll let you put it in your own words. So. <laughs> Yes, sir. I, um, so when I left Louisiana Tech, it just, you know, honestly, it just came down to, you know, my dream and my goal growing up being to be in the NBA, be an NBA player. And so, um, you know, that once I, you know, my sophomore year came around and I realized, you know, that wasn't going to be, um, you know, a viable option from there, you know, essentially, you know, I mean, the last person uh, that probably got drafted out of there might have been Paul Millsap and Carl Malone, right? It's, it's been a while. And so, um, that was the big thing for me, just trying to help get to this goal. But, um, by the time I got my, my release from my coach, one of my AAU coaches put me in contact with Coach Musselman in Nevada, and that's kind of how the process started. I um I went on a visit out there. I first built you know built a little relationship with the coaches, but I went on a visit out there, and then you know I just kind of fell in love with it, man the town, the community, uh, Coach Mus, his style of play. You know what I mean? Just these different things, man. It was exciting for me, and so that's kind of what uh, led me to that piece. Fantastic. As I mentioned, you know, when I was up there, you were sitting out, you know, one, I would ask you, I mean, your guy, you've been playing, as you said, your whole life, how tough was that year to sit out? But at the same time, you know, how beneficial was it to practice against two NBA guys, Cody and Caleb Martin, a bunch of other guys that are playing pro in other parts of the world, Jordan, Caroline, et cetera. How valuable mm -hmm. was it for you to, to sit out that, tw I guess it was 2018, 2019 season? Yeah, it was, uh, it was tough at first because, you know, time-wise, I got my release in 2017 and I ended okay. up, you know, I didn't play until 2019. So I almost sat out close to, to two years time wise. But when I went, um, when I spent the time under coach Musk there, uh, like you said, just day in and day out, it was tough at first. Cause 
you know, I wasn't playing. I'm used to playing every day. I'm used to, you know, playing all the time. And so uh, I was just practicing at that point. And so for me, it was finding, you know, finding how to better not only myself, but just finding my role on that team in the practice squad. And so, I, you know, I just took it as pushing those guys. And so every day I come in there, uh, naturally I'm competitive, but, you know, my role on the team was to come in and try to make those guys better, you know. And so every day I'm coming in, I'm going at Cody. I'm going at Caleb. I'm going at Jordan, you know, Trey Sean and the other Trey, like everybody, you know, that, that team was, was a loaded team. And so um, just coming in, man, that was kind of my mindset about it was just trying to, you know, stay positive and just stay aggressive and just, you know, make those guys better. Was there a conscious moment where it went from – man, I'm bummed out that I can't play to, you know what, I'm going to take advantage of this and I can actually help these guys. Oh, yeah, definitely. i say um, it was around the time, like close to around when the season was starting because, uh, you know, we started doing more scouting report related things. And so it kind of made things different for me. I was, I was kind of being that guy. You know, I had to be the star on the other team every game. And so I'm being – one game I might be, you know, the point guard. One game I might be the foreman. And so – I'm kind of uh, it helped me out because I'm trying to you know I'm trying to play like these guys and so it just gave me something you know to kind of try to add to my to what I have already you know just trying to add to that so see that's really interesting because you know Obi Toppin when I spoke with him a few months back he told me the exact same thing he redshirted his freshman year his was because of academics but he said mm-hmm. it was the best thing that ever happened to me it taught me one I could just focus on weight room school all that stuff but it also taught me how to be a better teammate how to watch the game in a different way did you get that same sense as Mm -hmm. well uh definitely definitely and like you said same thing with him i'm sure you know you grow up you play every year you know you've never really just not played and so uh it's a different experience but you know you just learn a lot uh watching especially in my situation like i had a lot of veterans on the team and so i was able to watch cody and caleb and uh trey and how they went about things and you know, that, I think that gave me a little edge mentally as well. So, obviously, we've spent a lot of time talking about Coach Moss. I mean, it would have been incredible to play for him, but he decides to leave after your redshirt season. How challenging was that? I mean, I know at least for a time you considered again transferring. Uh, how challenging yeah. was that moment in time for you? Uh, it was tough. Um, like I said, originally, um, when I came, when I committed to Nevada, you know, Coach Moss was a big part of that. Uh, the things he had done there previously and – uh, his style of play, his energy that he brought, it was, you know, it was kind of what attracted me to go there. And so um, when he left, it was tough for me. But I think that, um, you know what I mean, I, at the time I was in the transfer portal, but uh, Coach Offer came and he reached out to me. And at that point it was, uh, you know, we built a relationship there. And then I ended up coming back to that piece. Yeah, I live in L.A., and I got to know Coach Alfred well during his time at UCLA. What did he sell you mm-hmm. on? Because I don't know if he had ever seen you play or he knew you. Uh, I guess there's right. from Louisiana Tech, but, you know, I mean, he kind of – you had to kind of throw some faith into him that, you know, obviously it's going to be different than with Coach Musk, but that, right. um, you know, I'm going to be used in a way that, again, the goal is the NBA, and it's it, it obviously worked out. But, like, uh, mm-hmm. what exactly was his sales pitch to you? Um, his sales pitch, it, I wouldn't say it was much of a sales pitch. I'd say it was more of a, he kind of came at me like just trying to build a relationship originally. And so, you know, he kind of, he told me he got the job. He told me, uh, you know, he wanted me, clearly he wanted me to come back to play, but that his main focus was to try to, you know, build that relationship with me and uh, do these different things. And so I think that, um, you know, like I said, it was tough, but, you know, I think that, you know, he made it work. Clearly, we got here, so. Yes, well, and that's what, that's what I was going to say. Was there, again, I, I just talked about a light bulb moment, you know, during your redshirt year. Was there a light bulb moment for you? I know you had a, a couple injuries early this past season, but a light bulb mm-hmm. moment in practice, a game where you said, you know what, coach is putting the ball in my hands and letting me go. And, and you know, I got to take advantage of this because uh, this is my opportunity. Um, I think that uh, I've kind of, I've had that mindset. I kind of knew like, you know, when he came there, I would have to be that way to, one, like you said, he never saw me play originally for real. And so, or at that point recently. And so, um, you know, I knew I would have to, to show him to, to prove it, to have that responsibility. But I'd say uh, for me, it was just, it wasn't really a light bulb moment. It was just shaking the rust off. You know, I, again, I hadn't played for two years. And so early on, like, uh, it was a little, you know, it was tough getting my timing and my rhythm and, you know, just the flow back. But I think after a couple games, I was able to really lock in and try to, um, you know, just maximize that piece. When you look back, so for people who don't know, you averaged uh, 21 a game last year, first team All-Mountain West. 
Um, but beyond that, there was some crazy stretch. I was trying to find the stats where you averaged like 27 over a 10 or a 12 game stretch or whatever. Do you ever look back on some of those box scores or if, if you're watching tape or you're talking with NBA teams uh, and you just say, wow, like I had a, you know, like I had a, I had a pretty good year there this, this past year in Reno. I'd say that uh, I do, I do look at it and I say, you know, I had a pretty good year, but you know, if we're being honest, I think that, you know, I, I think it's got, I got more in there. I think that's the thing that, you know, you've seen, you know, a lot of people think they've seen a lot, and, you know, they think they've seen my whole game. And I just I think, you know, that's what excites me the most about this next level is to be able to go up there and actually show everybody that I have more to my game. You know, I have these different things. Like I played more, you know, I played more of a scoring role this past year. I kind of had to, I created some, I created doing this, but <clears throat> one thing with the next level with the spacing and, you know, the roles on the team and you got guys who are being paid millions of dollars to catch and shoot. And so, you know what I mean? Like these different things are going to open up. And I think that's where, you know, a lot of people are going to see them from different facets in my game. Yeah, it's really interesting because I, I talk about this all the time is like there's this belief with the NBA draft that you always have to take the younger guy and that, you know, the younger guy, they have so much more upside. But again, I'll use Obi Toppin mm -hmm. as an example. You know, he was 6'2 at 18 years old. So, He's 22 now. Is he really old? Because he's at right. the same kind of developmental curve. And I feel like it's kind of the same with you, where you had mm -hmm. a year and a half off where you weren't playing competitively. Um, you know, new coach, new system. And this is no disrespect to anybody, Coach Musk, Coach Alfred, but just a lot mm -hmm. of moving parts in your career where if you get in the right spot with some stability, you can work with the same coaching staff for two, two and a half, three years. You know what I'm saying? Right. Exactly. That's one thing, you know, me and my people, we talk about a lot is that I played for even going back to high school in seven, what has it been? Seven, eight years since I played for six or seven coaches. Wow. So I've never, I've had one coach for two years and that was it. Wow. And so that, and that was in high school, but like I said, I just being able to, you know, I hope that's what comes with this next level, being able to get somewhere under a coach who, who's maybe been there or who's going to be there, you know, and be able to, is get developed you know I really I feel like it's limited development within you know I'm only playing one year for each person and so there's only so much that they can really do in that little time and so that's what excites me man is being able to learn and be able to be developed like that I um another thing I came into college at 17 I was in my tech at 17 so you know I was I was a young guy at the time and a lot of people you know they like those things they don't like you know what I mean but it was uh yeah it's crazy man Fantastic. What has been the conversations with NBA teams? First of all, I know I mentioned about this process and all this stuff, but when did it really ramp up? I mean, when did it feel like the draft process? I know the last couple of weeks you've finally been able to get into a facility. You kind of have this individual combine kind of deal. Has it felt like the draft process over the last few weeks at the very least? Yeah, the last few weeks, especially probably the past month or so, just because, you know, the combine stuff has been going on. And even though it's not the real, the regular combine, it's, you know, I mean, it's still a modified version. And so i um, just been doing, I've been doing, doing a ton of interviews. I've done um, like team interviews. I've done um, a bunch of, I had to record a video workout. And then like you said, I went into the facility uh, here in Dallas and I got to, you know, show some of the things I can do. But it's been these past few weeks have been more busy than you know clearly the past six months so <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah we've been trying to do this interview for about two weeks and and, it, and in a good yeah. way every time we kind of set it up you have another workout another phone call so i'm really happy mm -hmm. you can make some time uh, a couple oh, questions yeah. before before i let you go one um what has the feedback been from nba teams i mean obviously you see yourself in a certain light but again in many ways, it feels like you haven't been able to show off the full skill set. What has the reaction been from NBA team? Um, a lot of that is the same. I think um, a lot of a lot of the, I'm not gonna say a lot of them. Some of the NBA team, you know, some of them like you, some of them really like you, some of them don't like you as much, and that's just you know that's just how it goes. But I think that um, playing, you know, I played West Coast, and so you know a lot of people on the East Coast aren't watching the game. Our game started at eight o'clock. Pacific time and that's 11 o'clock Eastern time and so I think a lot of the exposure you know being at a, a mid-major per se even though conference uh, I mean Mountain West is a pretty pretty competitive conference you know what I mean we still get the mid-major label and so I think a lot of those things play a part in some of the things that um, I've been hearing from you know a few of the teams that haven't got to see me as much or you know and so I think that's what a combine and you know being able to play in front of them really helps but you know I get a lot of good feedback I've talked to Talk to probably 
every team, but maybe two. Uh, and so I've, you know, I've talked to a few twice. And so, you know, there's, there's some teams that really like me out there. And so, you know, all it takes is one. And now that teams are getting to see you uh, in these tape workouts or whatever, I mean, has the narrative changed? Because, you know, again, it's one thing. First of all, I know how good Mountain West basketball is. So, like, it's not a knock to me. But it's mm -hmm. one thing to obviously see you against the Boise or San Diego State. But has, that, has the narrative changed? Have you felt like you've been able to prove more these last couple of weeks or anything like that? Um, I think some. I think, um, you know, just talking with, like, my agency and also with, you know, a lot of the NBA resources that I have, um, I think a lot of times that it's hard to, you know, they, they take a lot of it their, you know, very minimum account because you're not playing against these guys or whatnot. But I've been able to do things like, for example, my combine, my combine numbers uh, just from the testing. Uh, I've heard some things from teams who didn't think I was very athletic. <laughs> you know, just by the way I play. And so Tell I me, give that, me a call. You got my number, so. Right, exactly. No, but I finished, you know, I'm top 10 in every category. And so I think that's, I might be the only person in the draft who did that. And so, you know what I mean? I think that's, you know, just one way that I can correct these, you know, little things that people are saying. And so I think that's going to help. Fantastic. We'll wrap up here. I know I asked you this, but, um, you know, to, to, to kind of recap, at some point, you know, first of all, are you, what do you, how do you think you're going to handle yourself on Wednesday night? I don't know if you want to share what you're doing, but I mean, it, it's, you're not, you know, with no disrespect, you know, you're not Anthony Edwards, you're not LaMelo, you're not going to be off the board right away. So there's going to be a little bit of waiting. How are you mm -hmm. going to kind of handle yourself those first uh, hours or so? Um, I'm, you know, I'm going to have my people with me, my, my family members, you know, everybody who I love and close to me, I'm going to have them around. I'm sure we'll have some food or whatnot, you know, just a little gathering, but, um, I'm just, you know what I mean? I'm excited. I'm just ready to be there. I'm going to be locked in. I'm going to be watching it. You know, whoever goes, you know, in front, whoever goes behind or whatnot, it doesn't matter. I'm just excited to be here, man, honestly. And I was going to say to wrap up again, I know I, I asked you earlier, but when when the draft goes, you're going to be somewhere for some team, and, and hopefully those fans track down this interview. Uh, what would you tell the fans of the Pistons or the Hawks or whoever ends up with, with Jalen Harris? What would you tell them uh, about the guy that they're getting for their organization? Um, I tell them that, you know, they're getting somebody who they can trust to come in, who's going to produce, who's going to play hard, who's going to, you know, be enthusiastic and who's going to bring it every day, you know, whatever role that may be, whatever situation it may be, you're going to get somebody who can, who can do a lot of things and who can come in and, you know, who can help the team. And so, um, you know, I mean, just as excited as those guys who are, uh, you know, ready for me to get there. And so, yes, sir, that's it. That's me. They can get buckets too, man. Let me tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, anything, <laughs> anything we haven't hit on, Jalen? Anything that you'd want a fan to know or uh, your experience? Anything, really, mm -hmm. honestly. Uh, no, we touched on about all of it. I got to tell the people how I play. Uh, hopefully, you know, y'all go check it out on YouTube or something. Look up some highlights or whatnot. But, uh, yeah, that's it for me. Jalen Harris, University of Nevada, uh, one of, to, in my opinion, the most intriguing prospects in this NBA draft, man. It's been a long journey since all this started, uh, but I appreciate your time doing this, man. And honestly, man, best of luck. Don't forget about us little guys when you go big. Hopefully we can have you on uh, after that first successful NBA season, but we're looking forward oh, yeah. to seeing you on an NBA court soon. No, most definitely, man. I appreciate you having me on.